Hi, it's Pola from Pola Quilting. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So I showed you this shawl or, or scarf last time and I did mention it's uh, available in my shop and I did say if you like to have a tutorial for it, more than happy to make one if you let me know that you want one and you did, so let's make that uh, scarf together. So as you can see for this scarf I've used scraps of uh, fabric from the shirts and it really looks uh, nice uh, in that layout but whatever scraps or whatever fabrics you've got it will work it's just up to you uh, what colors what uh, maybe UFO blocks you've got available you can use it up here so the size of the block I've used for it because I did do it with the blocks was ten and a half inch uh, tall and then uh, I've used half an inch of the uh, seam allowance on both sides so that gives me nine and a half inches here and it's about 80 inches wide so the, how wide you want it obviously it's up to you as well uh, I probably wouldn't go below the ten and a half unfinished block here uh, if you're doing the scarf for a grown-up and you could uh, think that you know you could just make a one long strip and maybe um, cut it or to, to the size you can do but I found it difficult I don't have a big space like that and you know big cutting mat to go with one long strip <laughs> uh, like that so I did actually use just normal blocks so I had um, eight blocks to put together into that strip of 80 inches like I've mentioned 10, 10 inches uh, finished block so I will do the same thing this time you go have a look at your vips I've got a batch of blocks I had ready from uh, this tutorial. Again here I've used sh uh, shared fabric and I really like that how it looks when I make a scar uh, scarf out of them. So I will use those blocks. They are bigger, they are 12 and a half inches uh, unfinished. So I will actually square it up. Uh, I don't mind cutting a little bit off. And uh, once I square it up, I will prepare eight of them and then I will sew it into one longer strip. Uh, for the backing for the shawl, I'm using a fleece. This is low pile fleece I bought of, uh, on the roll and it works really well. It's nice light, but it's nice and warm, you know, to the touch especially. Uh, so uh, you might need to buy something or the other thing I was thinking, if you have maybe, if you want to recycle something, you can use a fleece blanket you may have lying around somewhere. Something maybe you are not using anymore maybe there's a stain somewhere in one corner and then you can cut the rest uh, to make your uh, scarf so I need uh, like I said eight inches long uh, strip uh, so I need eight blocks uh, to be squared up to ten and a half from this patch As you can see after uh, squaring them up to a little bit smaller uh, size those bits here are quite nice and big still so definitely if you like scrappy projects that can be put away uh, for something else even if I sew them all together that will be uh, another block and uh, now I'm ready to sew my uh, blocks together so I actually had nine of those blocks so I trimmed them all up. You would normally need eight for about 80 inches length but since I had nine this scarf is going to be just a little bit longer. And I've got a quarter inch foot here but it doesn't have to be again you know a proper quarter. You just want to sew straight those uh, squares and you know you could you, you could as well use a, uh, just a plain fabric so uh, no problem there. What we want is just a nice straight seam um, from top to bottom on this uh, in this step. Uh, again with the placement of the blocks by all means if you've got something intricate take it to the um, maybe design board or whatever you're putting your blocks on and place them first. I'm just going with the flow um, they all very similar, you know, one after another. I'm not worried about how they will look together. Uh, they are made from the similar fabrics, uh, so I know they will match. Thank you. 
Okay, I've got my strip uh, done um, and just few few comments here because I squared up those blocks in different spots. They are not evenly uh, squared up like uh, with the placement of each of the square. Then I didn't have to worry about matching anything here. And even you can see here that something was twisted and I've sewn it like this. As far as I later iron it nice and flat, it really doesn't matter. But if it bothers you, what you can do is come in here with the scissor and snip it here very, very close to that seam here, but obviously not cut the seam. If you snip it here, and then you can iron it flat that way if it bothers you. If it doesn't bother me, I will leave it as is. <laughs> as far as I can, uh, you know, iron that block flat later, I, I'm not uh, fast about those um, uh, kind of small issues. So because of the nature of the fabric I'm using, which is a uh, washed and worn fabric from the sheds, I'm going to um, use a lot of starch on this one to make it nice and crisp because we're going to be doing it um, self-binding method. Uh, so I need to make sure that once, while, you know, whilst I'm sewing, nothing is shifting or the shifting is as a minimal. Uh, so I've got the links to the starch I've been using recently with uh, with quite good results and uh, I like that starch very much. I will leave it in the description below. I've got something also for those in the uh, US market uh, in the link so if you like to have a look uh, please do. But So like I said I will take it to the iron board, starch it well and iron it very well so when I'm going to get to the uh, fleece part it's nothing will be moving here. That, that's the key thing. I finish ironing my strip. As you can see, it's much firmer now and it will be easier to work with. Um, and I also cut a strip of my fleece and um, I will be taking it somewhere else to, to kind of pin, but I will show you how I do it. Uh, so uh, it's got a little bit uh, kind of nicer side and a little bit less nice uh, side. So what I want to do, have a nice side up and I will put my right side of the strip towards it. So I'm just butting up the nicer sides together here. This is how it will look. And uh, I will use my worktop uh, in the kitchen to kind of s put it in nice and flat and, and have it in one go. Uh, so you may like to find a surface where you can kind of stretch it as much as you can just work with what you've got as you can see I, I cut the strip uh, bigger uh, just to make sure I can nicely kind of fit in I uh, will trim it later so that's not a problem and now I will pin it you can use the cut pins like you would do for uh, for the quilt or you can use uh, just normal pins and I did use the normal pins when I was doing my other uh, scarf and it worked very well uh, the key thing is I have pinned it quite a lot, especially around the edges here. All of it I've pinned and then I've put another quite a f another row, uh, quite a lot of them in the middle to hold it in place. Because the thing is we will be sewing it all around, it's a self, self binding project. We will be sewing it all around, we're leaving a small gap somewhere to uh, turn it around. And we want to make sure that we will not have any packers later when we will try to quilt it on top. Okay, so I've pinned my uh, scarf and I've got about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 pins in one square. So you can see how much I've pinned that um, to make sure it doesn't move or shift when I'm sewing. And I am going to be using my walking foot. Uh, I know it's just two layers, but because I really want to prevent any packers, I'm using my walking foot uh, to sew it together. I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but all my pins are kind of from the inside fabric to the outside uh, edges. So I will use two pins, uh, which I will put other way around to mark where I'm going to be kind of starting and finishing uh, to leave this bit here open uh, for turning around. You know, once you get going with the sewing, it's easy to forget that you need to stop in some point. So now I'll just move it under machine and just Take it as quickly as you feel confident or as slow as you feel confident and uh, just sew all around with exception of that gap here. You can have a gap in the middle somewhere as well, it's up to you. Um, the bottom line is we need to be able to turn it around.
make sure you remove your pins as you go along if yeah, they're going into the needle and then swivel and carry on with sewing if you overshoot here just don't worry move your needle up readjust the machine and carry on So I finished sewing it around, now I will uh, trim all the sticking out batting, just equal with the edge of the uh, fabric. And uh, also all the corners I will just um, trim a little bit here, so when I'm pushing them through there will be less uh, bulk, so a little bit on diagonal like this. Uh, once I trim it here, I will snip it here too. So as you can see I stuffed my hand into the opening and I'm at the other end of the uh, scarf. So you want to push those corners and push them very well. Don't, you know, not too hard not to pop the fabric. I did uh, cut it a little bit here. But just push them so you don't have to kind of go back to that spot uh, again after you turn it around. So, And I left the opening quite nice and big so I know I don't have a problem with that. Now I'm just going to hold that top and just pull it out. Okay, so the next step is going to be actually taking it to the iron again and uh, on a little bit uh, cooler iron this time, you know, just to make sure I'm not going to melt my uh, fleece, but I will go to the iron and I will iron it again nice and flat, making sure that I'm pushing out those seams here, kind of to the edge as much as I can so it's nice and flat here and there are no packers there. And I'll just go back here to that corner again, just push it out nicely. I've decided to go with the square corners, but there's no reason why you could not, you know, uh, get them a little bit uh, rounded. So it's, it's a preference. So like I said, now light iron, put it nice and down, push out those, cor uh, those edges here, make it nice and flat. Because I've starched this fabric before, so when I re-iron it, I will use a little bit just a, a water mist just to reactivate that uh, starch a little bit. Uh, so when I take it again to the uh, sewing machine then to kind of stitch the edges and do some design that uh, top will kind of stick a little bit to that fleece behind so it's going to be easier and it's not going to shift that much. Uh, with that opening uh, when I take it to the iron I will iron it inside quad, um, half an inch not a quarter I've sewn all around with the half an inch so I will turn it around iron it like that so again I will just top stitch all around and close that uh, in one go. So I finished re-ironing my uh, scarf and as you can see now all of those edges are kind of nice and crisp so it will be easy uh, to just stitch. So this is where the opening was. I fold it inside and I iron so I will start uh, first from uh, top stitching uh, edges all, all around. You can, you know, sew straight around, you can sew maybe twice around, you can use decorative stitch, maybe your machine's got a, a blanket stitch, you can use that. So really that's up to you how you want to finish that edge uh, and and kind of it's your imagination here. But just straight st top stitching will do as well. And then it will, depends how much, you know, um, how many pieces your blocks had it will require some uh, quilting so i've got quite small pieces here so i think i'll just go and do like a big zigzag on it and i will go once one way and then second way uh, just to secure all of those uh, smaller pieces to the backing so i will i will know that once i wash it because that will be the next step or last step uh, it all kind of it will not fall apart we're almost at the end so let me quilt it and i will show you how it looks uh, when it's finished
And here it is my finished shawl. Uh, I went a couple of times with like a big zigzag and then um, I came back third time just to go in the middle as well with the third uh, zigzag in the middle. Uh, that will hold all of those pieces nicely. And the last uh, bit uh, kind of to do now is to wash it so it's going to be ready um, to go to my shop. If you're looking for inspiration on the blocks you can use, uh, have a look at my uh, other tutorials. Uh, there's over a hundred different designs you can choose from and to be fair any of those blocks will be great uh, to put on the scarf. I mean how cool the maybe stars would look or, or triangles or uh, wonky trees and things like that will look on the scarf. This makes a really great uh, Christmas present if you know if you still have something to do and it can be for both uh, ladies and gents uh, because depending on colors you will use or fabrics you will use it will fit anyone. You can make it a little bit smaller if it's for, if it's for a child again you can use some fabrics uh, kids fabrics too to make it it will look great as well. Thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, Christmas is coming and December is coming. No Normally during the summer time and uh, December I spend time on uh, finishing all of those vips and you know orphan stuff uh, to make sure I have a space for kind of the next half of the year. So you probably will see more uh, small projects and maybe some uh, finished uh, pro projects as well. Uh, to hopefully give you some sort of inspiration how you can tackle your own uh, sewing rooms. I'll be grateful if you give a thumbs up if you like this project. You can find me on Facebook, Pinterest, um, Instagram and now on my own website. All the links are in the description below. Uh, so please go ahead. I'll be grateful if you follow me or subscribe to any of those uh, media uh, to support my work. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching and see you next time.